Hi guys, welcome back to Worms Mass Academy. Uh, I know it's been a while since I have um, made some videos, so I thought I'd create another one for you on the holidays. Uh, I've been busy trying to set up um, <clears throat> the business for next year, so anyway. Okay, so we're looking at power functions. Um, not a huge part of the course, but you still want to have a pretty good understanding of it. So um, here we've got x to the power of n. If n is odd, we're going to get a cubic shape, of course, except for if it's x to the 1, which is just going to be a straight line. If n is even, then we're going to have a parabolic shape. The difference is, as we get larger values, so if I said to you, um, y equals x to the 5, between 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, what happens if x, if we go x to the 5, it'll actually be lower here, and then it'll go above the other graph, here it'll be lower, and then above the other graph, so it sort of becomes more square. Likewise, if I had, these graphs aren't very accurate, um, but if I had x squared, looking like that, then x to the 4 would look like more square, and then x to the 6 would look more square again. The reason that is, if we had x equals 1 half, if I did 1 half to the power of 2, that would give me a quarter, and if I did a half to the power of 4, that would give me a sixteenth, which is why it goes down here. Before 1, the graph is less, but then if we choose numbers greater than 1, say um, x equals 2, if I use x equals 2, if I said 2 squared, I get 4, but if I did 2 to the power of 4, I get 16. So when once we go past the number 1, the graph becomes higher. Before 1, um, it's lower, and greater than 1, it becomes higher. So, let me just rub this out. So you can assume as your, um, if your value, your value of n, is between 0 and 1, then a higher power is going to make it lower. So if I had squared looks like that, then here that would be x to the 4, and then if I made it more square, that would be x to the 6. And I'll show you that graphically. So we'll clear everything that's in here. If I said x squared, x to the 4, you can see x to the 4 is below between 0 to 1, but then it's above after 1. Now if we did x to the 6, you'll see that this pattern continues. It's even further below. x to the 8, basically it's becoming more square at the bottom. So if we zoom right in, you can see the pink ones are lost. Likewise, if we change this to a 3, 5, 7, 9, you'll see that it becomes more and more square. So the blue one and the pink one, you can see the pink one's approaching a square in that corner more so than the um, cubic. Okay, so that's just a basic when we've, we've, got, we've got whole number in, integers. Um, what about if we've got a fraction? So here I've got, if a is greater than b and a is odd, it's going to look like this. Um, and that would mean b is also odd. Uh, if a is less than b, a is even, then it's going to look like that. Um, if n is negative and it's odd, if n is even and it's negative, um, you can always use a table of values. I'm going to show you how I teach kids how to graph these graphs. We'll do this question 
and then I'll explain what the easiest way is to sketch them. So there's all your graphs. Um, if you buy my book, you'll be able to see all the examples. However, let's have a look at this one. So for the function, I've got one on x to the power of five. Now we know what x to the power of five is. x to the power of five is a function that's gonna look something like that. Um, the way that I would sketch it, we know that it's zero here. So one on zero is undefined. So that would mean x is zero. Um, and we also know that y can't equal zero. So that's y equals zero and x equals zero. Now, if we come into here, x is approaching zero. If y is one on zero, um, that means that this whole function would approach infinity. If we go out this way, one on a really big number is a really small number. So it's gonna look basically like a hyperbola, right? And then the same thing would occur over here. Really large negative number means one on it will be a really small negative number. Really small negative number, one on it means it's gonna be a really large number. And you can see this, we'll get rid of this now. If we evaluate these things, f of two, that's one on two to the five, which is one on 32, which is really small. Oops, small. All right, so when I put two in, I get a really, really small value. When I put, so this is f of two, f of negative two, so that's going to be negative 1 on 32, which is also really small. So it's going to be there. If I put a half, I get f of a half is 1 on 1 on 2 to the power of 5, which is 1 on 1 on 32, which is 32. So when we put a half into it, we get 32, which is a really big number. So a graph we know has to look like Oops, that was terrible. We know that our graph has to look like that. And like that. We know when we put one in, so we should actually, that was silly of me. We know when we put one in, that it should go through one, one, because one on one to the power of five is one. So it goes like that. And like that. Okay, sketch the graph of f of x. So we've done that. We know it goes through 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. So there's our sketch of the graph with our asymptotes. Now, what's the easiest way to sketch these graphs? Okay, so this is how I do it. If we had x to the power of n, if n is just say I've got on top A, B. If A is even, B has to be odd because it can't be even because then it would cancel, so B is odd. If A is greater than B, if you go to sketch this graph, if you think about it, if A is greater than B, that's going to be like X to the power of 3 on 2. Um, if you've got x to the 3 on 2, the top number is larger, so it's going to go upwards, like a parabola. If you had it where the bottom number is larger, it's going to go downwards, like a square root graph. So if I had x to the 3 on 2, the first thing we know is the right-hand side is going to be shaped like that. The left-hand side, in this case there is actually no left-hand side, because our bottom is even. If the bottom is even, you'll never have a left-hand side because you can't square root negative numbers. Now, someone might say, what about if I have x to the 4 on 2? Well, you would have to simplify that and make it x squared, which means you can have even numbers. So you've got to check and see. It couldn't be a fraction that's not simplified. The assumption here is that when you do this, it's always going to have a simplified fraction. 
Okay, so that's if A is bigger than B, it's always going to have... So first thing, if A is bigger than B... Um, it's always going to have that shape. And if A is less than B, then it's going to have a square root shape. And I think of it as the powers having a fight. So 3 on 2, that's going to go up. X to the 2 on 5, that's going to go down because the bottom number is bigger. It's going to drag it down. X to the 3 on 4, that's going to go down because it's closer to, like it's the... the the denominator is bigger, so it's going to go downwards. Okay, the next thing you've got to look at is if the bottom is even, you don't have a left-hand side of a graph. So, if we have x to the 3 on 4, we know it's going to be shaped like that. If I put a negative number in, like negative 2, and I cubed it and 4th rooted it, the cube of negative 2 is negative 8, but I can't 4th root it. That's why there's no left-hand side of the graph. So in this case here, x to the 3 on 4 is just a graph that looks like that. And it's only the right-hand side. So just remember, whenever the bottom is even, you'll always only have the right-hand side of the graph. Okay, what about if I had something like x to the 1 on 5? If we go to sketch that, it's going to go downwards like that because the bottom's more powerful than the top. When we come to the left-hand side, it's actually going to continue downwards because if I have a number, x, to the power of one-fifth, if x equals one, one, mm, let's make it something different, two. Now, let, we'll make it negative, negative one. So if I say, what's negative one to the power of one and then fifth-rooted, it's negative one because you can fifth-root a negative number. So, if the, if the bottom is odd, then the shape will always go, it'll always follow. Um, so, if I had like x to the 1 on 3, that's going to look like that. So, it's going to follow the same path because it'll become negative. The only difference is, what about if I had x to the 2 on 3? In this case, the bottom's odd, so when I graph it, it's going to go downwards um, because the 3 is bigger than the 2. The difference is, this won't continue downwards, it'll actually reflect up here. And that's because if we let x equal 2, we get x to the power, oh, sorry, we get 2 to the power of 2 thirds, which is the cube root of 4, because 2 squared is 4, and then when I cube root it, if I let x equal negative 2, that's the same as negative 2 to the power of 2 thirds, which is the cube root of negative 2 to the 2, which is the cube root of 4. It's exactly the same answer. So that's why there's 2 and there's negative 2. They give exactly the same answer. The reason I can do that is because the uh, numerator is even. So when the numerator is even then the top, it'll bounce up, like it'll always go upwards. So if I had x to the 2 on 5, we know the 5 is going to drag it down, but it's going to have that shape. Um, if I had x to the, let's say, 5, I don't know, let's say 4 on three. So this one might be a bit confusing. You think, okay, the top's bigger, so it's going to go upwards. If I have a negative number, if I do it to the power of four, it's going to become positive, and then I cube root it. It's going to look like that, because negatives become positives with an odd, with an even power, and then when you cube root it, they remain positive. So that's basically any graph, um, any power graph. So we'll run through a couple of quick ones. If I said x to the 2 on 5, well, the bottom's more powerful than the top, so it's got to go like that. However, when I square something, it becomes positive, so it's going to have that sort of shape. Because when I square it, it'll become positive. Negatives will become positive. If I said x to the 5 on 3, 
the top's more powerful than the bottom. So it's going to go like that. Because they're both odd, it's going to remain and go downwards instead of going up. If one of them was even, it would bring it up. If I had x to the 3 on 2, it's going to curve upwards. But we won't have the left-hand side of the graph. Because if I put a negative number in, like negative 2 cubed, that's negative 8. The square root of negative 8, we can't do that in methods. So there's no solution. So that's why you can only use the right-hand side. If I said x to the power of 3 on 4, the bottom's more powerful than the top, so it's got to go to the right. We can't have a left-hand side as the bottom is even. So you can never have a left-hand side when the bottom's even. 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 Um, what else have we got? 5 on 3. 3 on 5. So x to the 3 on 5. Now that's going to look like that because the bottom's more powerful than the top. However, because they're both odd, then it's going to continue downwards like that. And then, of course, if we had x squared, we get a parabolic shape, and x cubed, we get a basic cubic shape. Now, that's all with positive powers. Now, I'm going to show you how, with any graph, if you want to draw its reciprocal, what you need to do. Okay. So, let's say we start with this graph x to the one-fifth. Let's say it looks like this. Now, if I want to graph one on x to the one-fifth, all you've got to remember is, if you ever have an x-intercept, that will be an asymptote. Because one on zero is undefined. Here, if we look at this graph, when we go through the point one, we go through the point one on both graphs. Here, because this approaches zero, its reciprocal will approach infinity. Here, because this inf approaches infinity, its reciprocal will approach zero. Likewise here, negative one, negative one, it'll still go through. As this approaches zero, its reciprocal will approach negative infinity. As this approaches infinity, this graph will approach zero. So I've also got an asymptote at y equals zero. So it doesn't matter what the graph is. I could give you a graph like this. Um, right, so let's say that is the point negative 2, and that's the point 3, and then that point there is, um, so negative 2, 0, 3, 0, and 0, negative 2. If I want to graph the reciprocal, okay, we know here, because that's an asymptote, uh, because that's an intercept, it becomes an asymptote. So if I want to just say that's f of x, if I want to graph, we'll say the pink ones, so this is f of x, and then we'll say the pink one, or the peachy one, is 1 on f of x. So that's going to become an asymptote. Um, here, if that's 0, negative 2, what's 1 on negative 2? It's negative a half. So this graph, because this approaches 0, this graph's got to approach negative infinity because it's approaching 0 from the negative side. Likewise here. So it's going to go like that. This one here, that approaches 0, but then it goes out to infinity, so it's got to go down like that. Likewise here, this one goes to zero, so this one's got to go up. This one goes to infinity, so this one's got to go out. And that'll happen with any graph. So if it's a one-on graph or a reciprocal graph, um, let me show you. So if I said x to the power of one-fifth, and then I said x to the power of negative one-fifth, 
So you can see there's our graph. And then if I graph its reciprocal, you can see as this one goes to zero, the other one goes to infinity. As this one goes to infinity, the blue one, the peach one goes to um, zero. So the reciprocal is always going to be, if the original goes to zero, the reciprocal goes to infinity. If the original goes to infinity, the reciprocal goes to zero. And that'll happen with any graph. It doesn't matter what the graph is. Um, I'll show you. Let's have a look at sine x. So sine x looks like that. If I graph 1 divided by sine x, so here this goes to 0, the reciprocal goes to infinity. 1 on 1 is 1, so that's why it goes through the same point. This goes to 0, this thing goes to infinity. What you'll also see is when x is 3.14, we've got an asymptote at x equals 3.14. So if I was to draw in x equals 3.14, you'll see that that would be the asymptote because one on, and then also I could do x equals zero, and you see that's also an asymptote. Because when we have uh, x-intercepts on the original graph, the reciprocal graph has a, an asymptote, because 1 on 0 is undefined. So hopefully I haven't confused the crap out of you. Um, but basically, you've just got to remember those little things, like if the top's even, both sides are going to be positive. If the bottom's even, then you know you're only going to have the right-hand side of the graph. Um, and then you've got to look at, is the top bigger than the bottom, or is the bottom bigger than the top? Um, and then that'll determine what shape the graph's going to have. So hopefully that's helped you out a bit with sketching these graphs, especially the fractional powers. Um, it's not too bad, as long as you uh, get a grasp of what I was saying before with the powers, which one's bigger and which one's smaller, and then go from there. Okay, good luck with graphing these. Um, I've never really seen one turn up in an exam, to be honest. I mean, maybe something like truncus, which is easy and you already know how to do, um, or x to the one third, but other than that, no, they're just, it's not a big thing in the, in the exams. Okay, all the best. Bye.